Church Online. My name is Christine and I'll be your online host for today. If this is your first time tuning in, we would love to welcome you. Please text me to 604-285-5770 or visit MyThrive.info and we'll mail you your very own Thrive stainless steel water bottle. And attention all parents, don't forget to visit MyThrive.info slash Thrive Kids so you can download the kids activity for today and follow along during our kids' Zoom classes from 10.45 to 11.15 a.m. It's a great way for the kids to connect with each other while strengthening their relationship with God. There will be kids' worship, a lesson, and games. So come join us. Last month when I was teaching kids' Zoom classes, there's this song that's been playing and been stuck in my head this whole month. It goes like, Jesus, you make me new in my heart and all I do. It's super catchy and it's been my favorite worship song. Speaking of favorite worship song, what's your favorite worship song? I love to hear your favorite picks. So share in the chat room or turn to the person next to you and tell them your favorite worship song. faces tuning into Thrive Church Online. So take a selfie of yourself tuning into Thrive Church Online and post it on all of your social media platforms and be sure to tag us at hashtag Thrive Church Online. Now buckle up for today's message as I pass the time over to Pastor JV. Well, hello, hello, welcome to Thrive Church Online. My name is JB, I'm one of the pastors here at Thrive, and I'm so excited to welcome you to an amazing Sunday here at Thrive Church Online. If this is your first time here joining us, you are what we call our VIP, and we especially want to welcome you. In fact, we've got a special gift to give just to you, just to say thanks so much for joining us today. If you want to go to mythrive.info and touch the button that says new to Thrive, we'd love to send to you straight to your door your very own stainless steel Thrive Church water bottle just to say thanks for being our VIP today. Can you give all of our VIPs in this place a big hand, a big shout in this place together right now? A huge welcome to all of you. In fact, we've got a saying here at Thrive, that welcoming is not just what we do, welcoming is who we are. And so with that in mind, would you welcome one another to church today in your chat rooms with your neighbors beside you? Let's welcome another to the house of God. You guys are an amazing church. It's always such a joy to spend time with you at our service. And we want to welcome you to an amazing Sunday to be here at Thrive Church Online. Today, before we get into the message, something we want to do together, just to remind every single one of us as to why we do this in the first place. Why do we even exist as a church together? I want to show you something that we haven't shown you in a while, but it's so important that we look at it. I want to show you the vision statement of Thrive Church. And I want to encourage you, if you know it by heart, you can close your eyes and test yourself to see if you know it word for word. If not, you can read off the screen. Let's say this together in a big, loud voice. This is what we're going to say. We're going to say, here at Thrive Church, we exist for five purposes called A-E-I-O-U. A stands for alive. It means we're here to worship Jesus. E stands for expectant. It means we're here to grow into Christ-like disciples. I stands for involved. It means we're here to serve God with our talents. O stands for out loud. It means we're here to lead others to Jesus. U U stands for United, means we're here to love our spiritual family, and our dream is to build a church of 10,000 A-E-I-O-U leaders here in the city of Vancouver and around the world. Oh, come on, give God a big hand, a big shout, let's play together right now. That's the reason why we are here at Thrive Church. And the fact is that when you know the vision of your life, you can go through stuff that's tough and you can still keep on going because a vision keeps you going. That's the vision of our church. And we're so glad that you're here to join us today. And in fact, today we've got something very special going on later on today. At the end of our service, we're gonna do something called communion. Communion is where we remember what Jesus Christ did on the cross for us. And so if you haven't 
haven't yet already, it's time to grab uh, maybe from your kitchen. Uh, what we use is we use grape juice to represent the blood of Jesus. Uh, if you don't have grape juice, that's okay. If you have only water, that's fine. Uh, we also use uh, unleavened bread here to represent the body that Jesus broke on the cross for us. If you don't have unleavened bread, you can just use normal bread. But this is our way of remembering what Jesus Christ has done on the cross for us. Well, we are going to do that toward the end of the service, but getting ready right now, we are super excited for the message today. If you have your Bibles, it's time to grab those right now. Grab your Bibles right now. Maybe yours is a paper Bible like mine. Maybe yours is a device you download the Bible into. Either way is cool. This is so a fun way for us to get our hearts ready for the message. We just hold up your Bible in the air like so right now. If you didn't bring a Bible, why don't you point to the Bible somewhere near you? And we're just going to make this proclamation together in faith today. Let's say this together right now. We're going to say, this is my Bible. It is God's word. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Today, I open up my heart so that God's word can come in and change my life and I will never be the same. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, we're doing a series here at Thrive. It's called Heart at Rest. And this series is all about how do you have a rested heart when you're living in a restless world? And there's all sorts of reasons that people feel kind of restless right now, but how can you find rest in the midst of all of this? A, a rested heart is what we're talking about in this series. If you've missed any episode of the series so far, you want to go to our Thrive Church Vancouver podcast or to our YouTube channel to check out all the episodes that you missed and encourage you to check those out. Today, we've got something very special going on today. We've got uh, one of our best preaching students here at Thrive Preaching School to bring the message to us today. You're going to be so incredibly blessed by the message she's here to share. Would you please welcome the one, the only, the brilliant, the beautiful, Marcy Mazariego. Let's give her a hand. Let's give God a big hand in this place as well. All right, good morning, Thrive Church. I have just been so incredibly blessed by this series that we're doing here at Thrive called Heart at Rest, and I know that you all have too. When I learned that I was gonna be a part of this, I knew exactly what I wanted to talk to you about, and you see, having a heart that's not at rest is kind of like an alarm ringing, right? And it happens to all of us. We all have these moments where we feel restless and we feel burdened, and this message series has given us some amazing tools to use when we feel that restlessness sneaking up on us. Having a restless heart, like I said, is that alarm going off of inside of us, warning us that something is missing and that we're running low on something. Kind of like a fuel gauge in a car, that little light that comes up warning you that you need to stop and get yourself to a gas station. Do you pay attention to that light? Can I confess that I am the worst at paying attention to that light. And before I got married, I would ignore that light as long as I could. And it wasn't because I didn't know how to pump my own gas. In the US, by the way, there's not really full service gas stations. You have to pump it yourself. But I just didn't wanna stop. Like it was so much work to stop and actually do the work. Thankfully, I wasn't ever completely out of gas, but I just, I added so much unneeded stress to my life. I'm glad that the light is built into the car because it lets you know that you need to stop and a restless heart is similar to that fuel light. It's like this internal warning sign, an internal alarm for you to pay attention to because something is getting close to empty and you need to stop to fill up. You can choose to ignore it, by, but by ignoring that alarm, you're going to run the risk of not getting where you need to go. When my internal alarm starts to ring, and lately, that alarm has been blaring often, one thing that fills me up is worship. Can you say worship? Worship provides rest to a burdened heart by shifting the focus on what's happening here to focusing on God. And today I want to talk about why worship should be such a crucial part of our lives and it's a powerful tool that's available to us when that alarm of a restless heart is ringing. I want to talk, talk about what worship is and why we need to worship now more than ever, especially as we continue to live in this restless and confusing world. The fact is, and I'm going to be really real with you all today, a little Sunday morning sing-along 
ain't going to cut it. It's not enough anymore. We can't just stay on the surface. It's time to go deeper. It's time to level up our worship. So turn to your neighbor, give them one of those little Sierra shoulder shimmies and tell, tell them it's time to level up. Level up, level up. All right, so let's start today by defining what worship is. To worship is to show a lot of love and adoration for something. It's easy to worship things, and we all worship something. For some people, they gather in huge stadiums, and they cheer on their favorite sports teams, and win or lose, they have this unquestioned devotion to the team. People can worship other things, like careers, or money, or spouses, and they're devoted, and they're focused on this thing. Am I saying it's wrong to be devoted to your spouse? No, absolutely not. Am I saying it's wrong to be focused on your career? No, absolutely not. But the problem comes when we start looking to these things to fill us up and give us purpose. None of these things are eternal, and all of them will eventually let us down. A career can end unexpectedly. Money comes and goes, and spouses... They're human and they have flaws just like all of us. And, you know, as far as sports team goes, just ask any devout Canucks fan how disappointed they are after season after season. Sorry, too harsh? But that same unquestioned devotion is the same kind of devotion that God deserves because he will never let you down. Now, how do we define worship? Worship can be defined as a lifestyle where the posture, that means the position of our heart, is bowing down in recognition of who God is and placing him at the center of our lives. To put it even more succinctly, worship is bowing ourselves down to lift God up. Now, within the church, worship is almost synonymous with music. We say worship, we think music. And while music is a great way to worship God, it's not the whole picture. It's like just a slice of the pie or the top layer of the cake, like the frosting, my favorite part. And the easiest way that we can shift our focus on what's happening here and focusing on God is through music. We can find so many examples of worshiping God with singing in, in the Bible. The word singing itself is found 121 times, so we can safely assume that singing and worship is something that is important to God. Um, but the fact is, singing out our faith helps it grow because worship music, it's not just a sound that we're hearing, it's a message that we're receiving. Psalm 100 says, make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing, knowing that the Lord, he is God. He who made us and we are his, we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Praise, give him thanks, bless his name, for the Lord is good and his steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. Worshiping through music is a powerful way that softens our heart and it realigns our focus. Worshiping with music is something that we can call level one. It's one of the easiest ways that we can connect with God when that alarm of a restless heart is ringing. This is a foundational level. All ages and skills are welcome. It doesn't matter if you're a musician, you're a singer. It doesn't matter because level one is using music as a tool to get our hearts to bow down to lift God up. Music is used in worship to declare the love and the beauty and the majesty of who God is. Sundays at Thrive before COVID, a year ago now, they were my favorite. We would start our church service and we would start it with music and we would see just waves of just lifted hands and open hearts and people having a moment to connect with God. Our talented band would work week after week to provide this opportunity for us to shift our focus on whatever burden or off of whatever burden we brought to church that week and on to God and the victory that we have in him. Worship helps us focus on God's mercy. It declares God's love and his power, and it reminds us that he is all-knowing and in control. 
But worshiping with music serves a second function as well. Music has the power to soften and tear down the walls in, the, in our hearts. And in order for worship to be effective, our hearts have to be open to allow God's truth to work inside of it. One of the reasons worship is so important is that as we shift our focus and recognize his majesty and his beauty and his love and everything that he is, it also makes us kind of look inwards and we see how unworthy and undeserving we are of his love. And as we worship, we're thanking him for how merciful he is and how he continues to love us and forgive us despite ourselves. I remember Sunday mornings, they used to be incredibly difficult for us and anyone with young kids, you guys know the struggle firsthand of trying to get your family out the door and to be on time for church. So I, Sunday mornings were so difficult for me that that famous Lionel Richie song, Easy Like Sunday Mornings, I hated that song. I hated that song because clearly that man never had to get his ch kids to church on a Sunday morning. Someone wouldn't like their outfit. Someone didn't want to finish their breakfast. Someone didn't brush their hair, couldn't find their socks. And that was just Raul. We would brush out the door and we would be arguing in the car about how late we were. And by the time we set foot in this place, our heart wasn't ready for worship at all. But having that moment, having that moment of bowing down and lifting God up would transform our heart. It would allow God's truth to come in to transform it. God inhabits the praises of his people. And you could feel it on Sundays. Do you guys remember that? Oh, you could feel it when the atmosphere in the room would change and it felt like heaven was crashing down on earth as chains were broken and hearts were restored and lives were transformed. Level one is my favorite. You know why? Level one, it comes with foolproof instructions. You have a worship leader or a singer on a CD or um, Spotify or whatever you use, and they're leading you to worship. The lyrics are the song are guiding you step by step. You have lyrics like, leave behind your regrets and mistakes. And you're like, yes, Jesus, I've made so many mistakes and I'm leaving them behind. Come today, there's no reason to wait. Yes, Jesus, I'm coming to you. I'm running to you. Jesus is calling. Yes, Jesus, thank you for calling me. Bring your sorrows and trade them for joy. Yes, Jesus, here are my sorrows and I receive your joy. See, clear instructions. One of my favorite Psalms is Psalms 103 and it says, praise the Lord, O my soul. All my being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and do not forget how kind he is. The psalmist here is giving himself clear instructions. He says it three times. Praise the Lord, O my soul. Praise the Lord, O my soul. He is telling his soul what needs to be done. The psalmist is leading himself into worship because sometimes Sometimes, as the word says in Matthew, the spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. Ooh, that verse is a, is a whole sermon in itself. We know what we should be doing, but our flesh is weak. Our spirit wants to connect with God, but I'm just so tired. Or that Netflix series is so good. Or whatever excuse we put up. And the psalmist is showing us that sometimes we have to command our soul to worship, to praise the Lord, because only then will we remember the hope we have when everything feels hopeless. And only then will we rest when our heart feels restless. When we sing to God, we're giving ourselves instructions by faith over our weak flesh. We are singing to God and we're kicking out our feelings out of the driver's seat of our lives and we're allowing God's truth to take the wheel. A heart at rest is a heart at worship. Um, I come back to level one daily. In good times, bad times, okay times, doesn't matter. You know why? Because God is worthy of praise in all time. Music has the ability to transport us transports me out of whatever funk I'm feeling. You want a heart at rest and you don't know where to start? Use worship to shift your focus from your current circumstance back to who God is. Worship with music so that your heart can be full of God's truth. Use worship to shift your focus. Remember, worship is to bow down to lift God up.
Level one of worship is a foundation for the heart of, a heart of worship. Level one is like the dessert, and we cannot live off of dessert alone, although some of us try. But if you're looking for a heart at rest, if you're looking for that peace that surpasses all understanding, then you're going to have to level up your worship game. Turn to your neighbor and say, level up. Let's take a quick look at John 4, verses 23 and 24. It says, The hour is coming and is now here when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such people to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. This is one of the most quoted and studied verses about worship, and it's always intrigued me because the Father is seeking worshipers, so he's actively looking for worshipers who worship in spirit and truth. It's not an either or situation, it's a both. Jesus is telling us that God is spirit, which is like an invisible force, as I've explained it to my five-year-old. It's kind of like the wind. You know it's there, you see it moving, but you can't actually see the wind. That same word is used to describe our spirit, our essence that is separate from this body that we have. We are created in God's image, so of course we would have a spirit too. So God is spirit, and we have a spirit. And worshiping God means connecting, or worshiping in spirit means connecting with God on that non-physical level when we take that moment to bow down our heart in worship, whether it's through music, through prayer, and when we do so wholeheartedly in response to God's presence. True worship has to be in spirit. That means it's engaging your whole heart Unless there's a real passion for God, there's no worship in spirit. At the same time, though, it's not an either or, it's a both. At the same time, it has to be in truth. That means it has to be properly informed. And unless we understand the God that we're worshiping, there's no, there's no worship in truth. Both are necessary for worshiping God. Spirit without truth So spirit without truth leads to shallow emotional experiences. And once the music stops and the emotion is over, worship ends. But truth without spirit, it results in like this dry, passionless encounter, a Sunday sing-along, right? And nothing happens. The best combination of both, it results in this appreciation of who God is informed by the Bible. The more we know about God, the more we appreciate him. The more we appreciate him, the deeper our worship is. The deeper our worship is, the more God is glorified. Our worship declaring the truth of who God is has to become our reality, our truth. The words that we sing, the promises we proclaim, the victories that we declare, all of those words are just words until they become our reality. One of my children, I'm not going to say which one, has been singing a song around the house lately that sounded vaguely familiar to me. So I started paying closer attention to the song that they were singing, and I realized that this child was singing a Mariah Carey song. And it was a song about a relationship and a breakup gone bad. And you can imagine my surprise when I heard that this child of mine knew every single lyric to the song, and they delivered them with such passion, like they had personally lived through the situation. I have two kids under nine, so I'm fairly confident that neither one has lived through this situation that Mariah is describing in her song. Why am I telling you this story? Sometimes we can sing along to a worship song. We can even sing it passionately, know every word. But until those words that we are singing become our reality, we're that small child singing that Mariah Carey song. The words are empty because we've never lived those words out. We can talk the talk, but can we walk the walk? 
The fact is, it's easy to sing when things are going well, and God is wor worthy of our worship when things are going well. When you feel like you have life all figured out, the sun is shining, your boss is in a great mood, your kids are listening, your husband lets you go to home sense unsupervised. True story, that happened yesterday. But we're going to come across these situations that require activating God's word inside of us, meaning it's time to walk the walk. We can sing, Waymaker, miracle worker. But what happens when those moments come and we feel like there is no way for us, that there is no miracle for us? We've sung these songs and we've declared these songs wholeheartedly. We've lifted our hands and we've declared these words of, the, of who God is. We've talked the talk, but can we walk the walk? We will at some point encounter a really tough time, whether it's a financial situation, a marriage issue, an uncertainty about our future. And in those tough moments, when that alarm is ringing of a restless heart, it requires understanding that God is not just words in our heart, or we have to understand the difference between knowing God as just words and knowing him as truth, living out those words in real life. Level one has given you the word. Level one has given you the talk, but to level up, you must now walk the walk by activating the truth in, in spirit and in truth. There have been plenty of moments in my life where I felt crushed by my circumstances, and maybe you've gone through a similar situation where you know that feeling of dread that you have in the pit of your stomach when you see nothing ahead of you but the end of the road, and you think there's no way, there's, there's no miracle here. Our alarm of a restless heart is ringing and God is the last place we turn when in fact some of the most healing and powerful moments and powerful breakthroughs happen when we approach God with a discouraged and a hurting, a hurting heart. Psalm 34, 17 through 19 says, the righteous call to the Lord and he listens. He rescues them all from their trouble. The Lord is near to those who are discouraged. He saves those who have lost all hope. Good people suffer many troubles, but the Lord saves them from all of them. You want to level up your worship? Worship God in spirit and truth. Let God's truth become your reality to have a heart at rest, worship in the truth of who God is. We can become so focused on how big our problems are that we forget the size of our God. If the giants that we're facing in our lives, those fears and those worries are that big, then can you imagine how much greater God must be? The fact is the size of our giants is just proof of the size of our God. Philippians 4, 6 through 7 says, do not worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your heart and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. I've heard this before, haven't you? Don't worry, pray about it. I've heard that so many times. It's like a, a magic band-aid that is magically supposed to make things easy and better. But this is what God's word promises us. This is God's truth. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. When we come to him with our worries, with our burdens, and we tell him what we need, when we're not afraid to just let it all out in front of God, admitting that we don't have it all together, that we need help, we're, we're bowing down to lift it, to lift him up. We bow down our heart in recognition of him being our deliverer and it results in his peace guarding our heart. We don't have to have it all figured out before we approach God because he loves us right where we are, in the middle of our mess, in the middle of our restlessness, he will meet us there. We don't have to go around pretending that everything is fine and nothing is wrong. A Sunday confession, I am the worst worrier. I jump straight to worst case scenario every single time. But it would be hypocritical for me to approach God and be like, everything is awesome, right? Because God knows it's not. He knows our hearts. He knows our struggle. And he wants us to know that we're not alone. 
to acknowledge how much we need him. He wants to give us rest. And when we release that burden to him in prayer, we're giving him worship because we are bowing down to lifting him up. Sometimes, okay, a lot of the times my prayers sound like, God, just let me win the lottery. Let me show you how faithful I can be with $10 million. Please, please, in the chat, tell me I'm not the only one that prays like this. And you know what? If it was God's will for us to be millionaires, then we'd all be millionaires. But God has promised to be our provider. I've sung the song to myself so many times. And there was a situation in my life where our family needed something and it fell out of reach for us financially. I was so incredibly burdened by this and I was so worried and I talked it to death with my husband. And finally one night as we were laying in bed, I started to pray out loud in the dark. It was a little awkward because I'm sure Raul wasn't expecting me to just burst into this moment of prayer, but that alarm of an anxious heart was ringing inside of me and I knew I was running low on something. I was running low on faith and the answer was to activate the the truth of God that I have inside of me and let these words become my reality. In that moment, I chose to bow down my heart to lift God up. I needed to remind this situation just how big my God is. I wish the story ended with me saying amen and then checking my bank account and seeing that $10 million deposit, but that's not what happened at all. And I think a lot of us get discouraged because we pray for a situation, a change or a breakthrough, and we say amen and then we open our eyes and we expect everything to be the way that we've asked it to be. That's, that's, does that mean that God's not listening? No, it just means that we are not God and our will won't always be done. We're so used to like the convenience of modern day living, right? We pop something in the microwave and 30 seconds later, it's warm. God isn't a microwave that you just pop a prayer into and then you put your allotted time in there and you take out your desired results. Learning to trust God means that we also have to trust in his timing. So what are you facing this morning? Is it time to activate the word that is already inside of you and worship God in spirit and truth? Philippians 4, 6 through 7 says again, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and mind as you live in Christ Jesus. Is this not what we're looking for? God's peace to guard our heart and our mind. God's peace to bring rest to a restless heart. I love this passage so much, but so many of us, we miss the true power by just stopping at verse seven. We pray to God, we give him our worries and our fears, but then we forget verses eight through nine that says, and now dear brothers, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true, honorable, right, pure, lovely, and admirable. Think about the things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all you have learned and received from me, everything you heard from me, saw from me doing. Then the God of peace will be with you. This is that missing piece. This is how we find rest for our restless hearts. We remind ourselves, we fix our thoughts on everything that is true, God's truth in us, and let his promises become a reality in our lives. I see this meme on the internet so much, and I love it. And today, I want to claim this little guy for our Heart at Rest series. This little guy, he is the definition of having a heart at rest. Even if he's sitting in the middle of the fire, even if he's going through the hardest time, his heart is at rest because he knows God's truth is his reality. His eyes aren't closed. He's not unaware of what's going on, but he knows that God's peace surpasses all understanding standing. Worship God in spirit and in truth. So, so far we've covered worshiping God through music. We've learned that worshiping God through music helps us shift our focus off of our circumstances and onto God. We've covered worshiping God in spirit and in truth, meaning that we are worshiping God by making God's truth, God's word, our reality. So how do we level up from that? 
One of the reasons that worship is such a crucial part of our lives is because it is practice for what we will be doing in heaven. The ultimate level of worship is heaven. Everything that we experience here on earth is preparing us for the joy that we will have when we get to heaven. Every moment that we've had here in God's presence, those moments where he's comforted us and strengthened us and healed us, they will be nothing compared to having him in front of us. In heaven, our new reality, our new truth will be every single fulfilled promise that Jesus has left for us. This is the hope that we have, this faith that we have of being part of this glorious moment that no matter what is happening right now, no matter what has our hearts so restless right now, we have this faith that it's not forever because ahead of us is still the joy of heaven. Level up your worship by keeping your heart fixed on what God has promised us at the end of the journey, the gift of heaven. In chapters four and five of the last book of the Bible, the book of Revelation, I know, ooh, scary. It's not, I promise. The apostle John is having this vision of heaven. He calls it a door standing open in heaven. And I, th I think of it as like a curtain being pulled back for John to see. And John describes that he sees a throne and he sees God seated on the throne and what's, what's surrounding his throne. He describes flashes of lightning, thunder, fire, a sea of glass. He describes these four creatures that are unlike anything we've ever seen before. He describes them as being covered in eyes. One looks like a lion, another like an ox, another has a human face, and that fourth looks like an eagle. And the purpose of these creatures was to day after day and night after night to keep worshiping God by saying holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, the one who always was, who is, and is still to come. John describes 24 elders who lay down their crowns before the throne of God and they say, you are worthy, O Lord our God, to receive glory and honor and power for you created all the things and they exist because you created what you pleased. And if that's not enough, in chapter 5, we see that John hears the voices of thousands and millions of angels singing around the throne, and they're singing in a mighty chorus, worthy is the lamb who was slaughtered to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength, honor, blessing. And then every creature, every creature in heaven and on earth, under the earth and the sea, they sang blessing, honor, glory, power belong to the one sitting on the throne and to the lamb forever and ever. And the four living beings said, amen. And the 24 elders, they fell down and they worship God. What will this sound like? Right where you are, can we take a moment to take a taste of this kind of worship? And worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Holy, holy is He. Sing a new song. Do. 
heaven, all of creation will worship God. All of creation will be singing, worthy is the lamb. And why are they singing this? That lamb was Jesus. Jesus is that one that took the judgment that you and I were headed for and he died for you and me so that we could have forgiveness and be allowed to be a part of this moment, this glorious moment in heaven where we're gonna experience the fulfillment of all of God's promises, where everything that we've placed our hope in will be our reality. Jesus died so that you and I could experience this day, the day where there is no pain pain, no illness, no sorrow, where our provider, our protector, our deliverer will be standing right in front of us. On that day, our hearts will be at rest because we will be in the presence of peace. If worship feels awesome here, how much better will it be in heaven? Don't you want to experience that? Don't you want to bow down and place God at the center of your life, just like he is in heaven? Whatever struggle or burden or difficult situation you're facing today is only for a small amount of time in comparison for the eternity that is waiting for us. We practice worship now to bring rest to our hearts, to build our faith, because when we are in God's presence, our heart is at rest. What has your heart restless today? Is the alarm of your heart ringing for some time in God's presence? Maybe you're listening this morning and this is your first time tuning in and you're thinking, there's no way God can get me through this situation. There's no way that God is going to accept me as I am. Let me tell you, friend, that all it takes is a willing heart, a heart willing to bow down and recognize that God is bigger than your problems. God is bigger than your fears, bigger than your illness and that heartache. Nothing in this world can separate us from the love that God has for you and the love that was so great that he sent his only son Jesus to pay on the cross for your sins and mine so that we wouldn't have to go through this life separated from that love that he has for us. If you want to accept this love into your heart today, there's a QR code on your screen and a link in the chat. I'm going to lead you in that prayer. And for those of us that have already prayed this prayed this prayer, let's support those who are praying it for the first time. And we say, dear Jesus, thank you that because you love me, you died on the cross to pay for my sins and rose again to give me life. Today, I open up my heart and I ask you to forgive me of my sins and fill me with your Holy Spirit. I place my trust not in what I do, but in who you are and what you've done for me. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. If you prayed this prayer with us right now, don't keep it to yourself. Let us know because we want to be a part of this journey with you. The second group of people I want to pray for today are those who realize that alarm of the restless heart is ringing and we need a moment of worship, of rest in God's presence. We want to be able to worship to shift our focus from our current circumstance and onto God. We want to be able to worship God in spirit and in truth by making his word our reality. As the music continues to play, let's pray together. Let's pray for our hearts of worship for every member of Thrive Church. And we say, dear Jesus, thank you for allowing me to find rest in you. Thank you for creating me to worship you. I pray for whatever difficult circumstance I'm facing. Help me shift my focus from how big this problem feels to how big you are compared to it. Give me strength that I need to worship you in spirit and in truth to make your promises my reality and make that hope, that hope that I have in heaven, what I anchor my faith on. Thank you for loving me just as I am. And thank you because you are enough for me. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Let's invite the Thrive Worship team to lead us in worship and we will get ready for our communion after that. Can we give God a big hand, a big shout in this place together right now? 
Oh, come on, there's more in you than that. Give God all of your praise in this place right now. Praise God. Loved so much of what Marcy was sharing with us today, how a heart at rest is a heart at worship. And when we have the opportunity to worship God, we may want to make the most of it. And we want to do one thing right now to remember what Jesus Christ has done the cross for us. It's called communion. If you have recently, even just today, received Jesus Christ as your Savior, you prayed that prayer with Marcy to ask Jesus' forgiveness into your life, then you are a child of God. You are forgiven of your sins. You are a citizen of heaven. And in fact, we've got a special gift that we want to give to you. And uh, we want to invite you to go to uh, the little link at the end of that prayer page and there are a bunch of gifts we want to give to you to be uh, just a, hopefully an encouragement to you as you begin this relationship with God. If that's you, if you prayed that prayer in addition to all those different gifts that you can access, we want to invite you to take communion with us right now and this is our chance to remember what Jesus Christ did in the cross for us. So if you have that piece of bread, if you have that cup ready to go, we're going to do this together right now it, and this is I'm going to take a piece of uh, bread from this unleavened bread here. I'm going to dip it into the cup and we're going to do this together is that on the night that Jesus was betrayed he took bread he broke it and said this is my body which is broken for you do this in remembrance of me and the same way after supper he took a cup he said this cup represents my blood which is poured out for the forgiveness of people's sins drink this in remembrance of me and so in a spirit of worship since we're worshiping God in spirit and in truth since we're remembering what Jesus Christ has done on the cross for us let's take this bread and let's take this cup in thankful remembrance of all that Jesus has done for us Heavenly Father, we want to thank you so much for your amazing, unconditional, unlimited, persevering love for every single person here. We thank you so much that whatever it is that we may be facing by way of challenges, uncertainties, it nothing, none of it compares to you. You are far greater than it all, and you proved that when you died on the cross for our sins and you rose again from the grave. And so it's with a thankful heart that we remember what you did for us on the cross. We thank you so much that every single person here, you love them, you know what they're going through, and you know the plans you have for them. And with that in mind, we just pray all of your blessing all of your power, your protection, your provision, your healing, your comfort, your strength, your wisdom, and your Holy Spirit to fill every single person here until we next meet again. We thank you. We give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Let's give God another big hand, a big shout in this place together right now. Would you turn to your neighbor and say, I'm so thankful for Jesus. I'm so thankful for Jesus. I'm so thankful for you. Jesus broke his body so that we together as the body of Christ today, that we could come together and worship God. And I can't wait just, you know, hearing Marcy preach and talk about the times when we used to meet together on site. I can't wait for that day to come again. I know you are probably feeling the same way. Let's pray for that day to come soon. And we're just gonna pray together that God with him, the best is yet to come. And so with that in mind, we're gonna end off. If you call Thrive Church your home church, you just believe the work that God is doing here at Thrive. It's time to give your faithful tithes, your generous offerings. Let's put all this into God's hands, knowing that when we do so, when we seek God's kingdom first, He adds what? He adds everything we need. And not only does He add everything we need, He builds His church through us as well. And so let's give our very best to God. Have a great week, everybody. We love you guys. God loves you. We'll see you guys next week for the next episode of our Heart at Rest series. Love you guys. See you really soon. God bless you. Thank you, Marcy, for that powerful message today. All right, let's jump into some announcements. Once again, if this is your first time visiting us, let us know by texting me to 604 or visit MyThrive.info and we'll mail you a Thrive stainless steel water bottle. It's our way to thank you for spending your time today watching the Sunday service. All right, if you prayed a prayer earlier to receive Jesus Christ today, congratulations! Let us know by texting BELIEVE to 604-285-5770 or visit MyDrive.info and click I want to receive Jesus today. We have paired gift that includes a series of videos that may answer some of your questions about Christianity. It will be mailed right to your door and we hope that will guide you on the right path to follow Jesus. Also, if you like to get baptized or find out more about baptism, go to MyDrive.info slash baptism. Thrive Kids Bible Verse Alphabet Challenge. 
Drive kids will be having a Bible verse alphabet challenge and they will learn a list of verses from A to Z with songs and activities. This is a great opportunity for the kids to store God's word in their hearts when they are growing their relationship with God. For more information and to sign up, please visit mydrive.info. I've been really enjoying the current message series called Heart at Rest. I've learned from today's message to level up how I spend my time worshiping Jesus. I encourage you to invite all of your friends and family to, to join us next week right here at Thrive Church Online for episode seven of our Heart at Rest series. Also, we'd like to stay connected with you throughout the week. So check out and join our Facebook group at Thrive Church Online Community. Thrive Church Online Community is an online community for us to hang out and stay connected. All right, everyone, that's it for this week. Thank you so much for joining us. Don't forget to give your tithes and offerings online at mythrive.info. I hope you all had a lovely Sunday morning. Enjoy the rest of the week. I'll see you next week right here at Thrive Church Online. Bye.